So we are talking about Sri Lanka, which is uh, for the international world. And we are talking about plantation tokens, which were issued between 1843 and about 1883 or 1890. So these are uh, Ceylon coffee mint tokens. I mean, they were used for tea plantations as well after the coffee plantations. Uh, they, there is a sort of change in 1870 because we changed from uh, British currency of uh, pence to decimal currency of rupees and cents in 1870. So there is a changeover during that period, which is reflected on the tokens. And these tokens were basically issued by estates and none of the government factories issued such tokens. This is a typical scene of a coffee factory during that era from 1872 um, Illustrated London News. Now these are script. And what you mean by script is a substitute for government issued legal tender currency. During the time in the early, in about 1825, Ceylon changed from using uh, the, their own uh, denomination, which was inherited from the Dutch, which were rix dollars, to use in British uh, pound shilling pens. Britain sent a lot of silver coins to Sri Lanka, uh, Ceylon, and I was told that most of the uh, Ceylon people used the silver coins because there was a change in exchange rates and melted them. Somewhere around 1835, England said, we are not going to send you any more silver coins because you don't know how to use them without melting them. So there was a dearth of small change and that partly resulted in the issue of these tokens around 1843. They were issued in three denominations mainly, nine pence, which was a full task. It was the task of picking one bushel or a full bag of one quart, which is 51 kilos of clean coffee. The half of the task, half task, which was four and a half pence, and the quarter task, which was two and a quarter pence. So most of these, a lot of these coins came in these three denominations and based on the price or the amount of money that were paid to the labor of that task. The early coins were countermarked such as GS and Co, which is George Stewart and Company. They came in various sizes, shapes, and materials, and some had numbers and letters struck in queues. These were locally manufactured, and there were also tokens which were in relief and mostly struck in mints in England, London, or Birmingham. Uh, the quantity manufactured is rarely known, but I think so most of these tokens, only about a 500 to 1,000 tokens were minted, and therefore they are quite rare. Because they were script, there was no need for a large number. You paid the day's labor with the script, and in the evening, the labor came and bought the, their provisions from the shop, and you got back your tokens. So there was no need to have a large number. Um, so if you take the information that is used, they, they were used in coffee plants, churches, Chinoa, which is actually done for making quinine, which was needed to uh, escape from malaria, and also in later days in the tea estates. So the value is given, the task is sometimes given, the name of the company is given sometimes, most often the initials of the company is given and that makes it very difficult to identify which company it is. The year of issue is occasionally given. There is sometimes a logo and a serial number is sometimes stamped on it. And that means that this token has at some point been changed to a chit, which was a control chit to thing. These account, subsequent countermarks were made after the usage as tokens because once they were chits, they were really not tokens. The sizes are from about 16 millimeters to about 45 millimeters, mostly round, few elliptical, rectangular. I'll be showing a lot of examples. Some uniface, some have grained edges, most are plain edges. 
Some have a small circular hole, some which were actually drilled when they were made into chits, but uh, some have originally a hole for, I think, uh, proper counting, or, and some had very specific counter marks, even not as used as chits, and they were from about one to about 20 grams in weight the one being the lightest and 20, most of them were about five or six grams. They had a very large variety of material used for them, copper, brass, bronze, tin, lead, zinc, pewter, and I, there is records of even in paper, but unfortunately none of the paper have survived. So that is only a recorded instance that paper was used. I'm amazed that lead was used considering how bad lead is considered now, but it was frequently used because they're low melting point and making them were easy. Okay, so the identity of many other companies that issued their coffee tokens have been established from documents. But there are, however, some well-struck tokens which have only initials and we have no idea where, which company minted, minted them or got, had them minted. And that basically uh, requires us to do a lot more research if we want to identify them. And some of them are some of the common points. So I think uh, I'm sure some more research can should be done to identify them. But there are some o, um, locally manufactured coins which have only initials not identified. Some of them have been cataloged. Maybe only one of them exists. And I suspect that some of them may not be tokens and fantasies made for collectors hunting for them in the early 20th century. Ceylon people are, very, if you, the tourists and the foreigner wants a token, we will, I'm willing to pay a lot of money, we'll make one and give it to him. So you have to be careful that some of them may not be real. Um, so if you take, there are some which are extremely common and I have seen hordes of about a, over a hundred of them, uh, but they still sell on eBay for a significant, significant price. About 25 of them are fairly easy to collect and I have seen most collectors who have spoken to say, how many tokens do you have? They'll have about 25 or 30 if you are seriously collecting them. Now, Lousley, who was a collector in 1895, catalogued about 43, and the most comprehensive catalog, which has been named so far, which is Pridmore in 1960, had about 120. I was lucky to buy a collection made by Shiran Cruz of Candy, who had about 75 tokens. At that time, I had about 30, so this almost double the number of tokens and I have tried to add to it uh, from buying on auctions, but now it is much more difficult because most of the re remaining ones are extremely rare and expensive. The references for the coffee tokens is Pridmo. Uh, Sydney Eastwood of Pittsburgh also had a substantial amount of tokens which he gave the Carnegie Museum uh, on his death. Unfortunately, that was in 1978. I got to Pittsburgh and was living in Pittsburgh for quite some time in, in 1996. But by that time, in seven, 1978, Carnegie had auctioned them off, which is a big pity because I was unable to see them. Lowsley was the oldest catalog, I think, made of it in 1895 and that is published in the Numismatic Chronicles. And that makes a very interesting uh, collection of what was available shortly after uh, the coins were, these tokens were used. So let me go through uh, fairly rapidly about all these different tokens that you find. These were the oldest GS, uh, George Stewart and Company, mint uh, struck, with the countermark on old Ceylon coins, which were no longer in circulation. That is 1815. This is a half farthing from about 1828. And these were struck around 1843. Uh, 
Uh, then there is a estate called Gona Adhika, which stuck this token with Gona Adhika written on the side. So we have an identity for the estate. And they came in two sizes. So you know that the half size is the ha uh, half task. And these, this was a lead coin. This was pewter. It says Polwat uh, uh, Mills. It's a fairly rare coin, a rare coin. I was able to get this image. The images I'm showing are the best, not necessarily of my coins, but the best image I could find are various auction catalogs. This is a typical local mint coin where the nine is interpreted as nine pence. And there was a number issued with it. And this is the sort of uh, local limited tokens. Rudd Brothers, uh, where I just countermarked with, the, uh, with, uh, with uh, their name. And this was in tin. So they don't, the tin ones they have not survived very well. Great Western Estate is a, a nicely minted thing. This would have been minted in England. And this estate still is surviving. It is still being a major tea plantation, so uh, and coffee plantation before that. And that also comes in a quarter. There is a half was listed. The Ceylon Plantation Company was another one which had uh, companies. There you only find the initials of the company, CPC. And the size of the token here, the full and here the half uh, with the logo is only indication of uh, what the value is. You can see that the full ones are around 30 millimeters, 28, 34 sometimes and the halves are around 20 to, 20 to about 25. MacWoods and Company, it's a still existing company, a nice token in also in tin. This is the only token which is, I think, elliptical. Alston, Scott and Co. Uniface, lead, uh, all, again, a lead piece. Uh, and this is fairly common. I mean, you find this quite a lot in most collections. This is fairly rare. It's St. Sebastian Mills, 1856. I'm going in chronological order from the earliest, some, as far as I can arrange them. Four and a half pence. This is a picture of the mill and James Swan and Company, dated 1856. We have another James Swan and Company with, uh, for a different mill of the same company, also dated 1856. Now, there are lots of companies where they have just an initial on one side and four and a half D on the other. I think they, the foreign companies were able to mint these tokens and therefore they minted them uh, and uh, there are many tokens like this with different uh, uh, initials, JPJ uh, and this is uh, uh, Rob, RJ Corbett uh, in a, a KP on the other side says that it is used in Kolapatana, one bushel this one is not listed in uh, Pridmo and uh, the date of 1858. Now, this one is a, a denomination which is totally surprising. It's three quarter bushel. Normally, it's one bushel and half bushel and quarter bushel. This is this three quarter bushel token. I got in uh, recently, actually, about five, six years ago, it was found in uh, still on uh, Sri Lanka and it was offered to me. I bought it, it was quite expensive, but I bought it because it was quite unique into the fact that it was not a denomination, which is normally happens. And uh, it's an interesting piece. And it has GGK, which is the Gongala Kanda estate 
uh, thing. That is doc documented in for one bushel in Pridmo as Pridmo 23, but the three quarters is not. Uh, this is a fairly common uh, token of uh, Joy, uh, AB and Scott and Company, which has an elephant, which is what was mostly on all our tokens, and a deer on the other side, stag head on the other side, and Alex Binney and Scott which founded, was founded in 1854 and used of Borella Mills. These are three uh, tokens in bronze, AGK Boron. It is fairly rare and it's a state uh, in Matale. And you have bronze and then you have uh, tin, which is clearly not as well preserved. And there is another one which is just says boron, also in tin, and these are much smaller, 16 millimeters. Then there is George Bird. There is uh, the full, uh, this is the nine pence, the full one, 34 millimeters, about 13 grams. Then you get the half, four and a half pence, and copper. And uh, then you get GB, which is the quarter, which is two and a quarter pence, all George Bird, which uh, who was a planter of that time. Now you get things, this has MG, it has full, it's well stuck, but what MG uh, stands for, it's not Maurice Garages, but uh, what it stood for in Sri Lanka, I'm not sure, but it's, uh, well struck token, which is fairly rare, but I think it's, uh, it is something hopefully we'll find out who it is. There is a half of that, which has an O also countermarked on it, and without the O's is available, and it has MG, so I don't know what the company is. Then there is a bit of interesting tokens, which has a TC countermark. Now, this tokens have been found with this countermark has been found on Indian coins on I think coins from Philippines, coins from America and all over the world. And Pridmo for some reason suspects that they were used in Ceylon. I'm not sure why he sort of his argument but maybe some of them were found in Ceylon. But I am not 100% sure because the countermark TC has not been identified and whether this is a, the, some of the Ceylon coins were taken and countermarked abroad in some place, some other state abroad or whether they were done in Ceylon, I am not 100% sure, but they are listed in Pridmo as Ceylon, so they are normally collected as Ceylon, even though we do not know the countermark, there is a sort of suspected uh, relationship, but I'm not sure that this is the correct one. And this is a uh, American uh, one cent of that 1833 that has been countermarked TC. Now, looking at all the coins that have been found countermarked, we know that these must have been countermarked after about 1860, because we find coins up to about 1860 with this TC countermark. So, the, and we stopped using these tokens somewhere around 1890. That's why it is sort of estimated that these tokens were used between 1860 and 1890. But whether TC is actually a Ceylon token, I am not 100% sure. It's interesting. Then there is a Dali Butler and Company, which still exists, which was at a, um, Mill in uh, Slave Island, Colombo, Ceylon, 1860. There was a smaller token of Dali Bartland Company, 1860, also of brass. Then there is an interesting set of tokens, uh, which is St. Sebastian Mills. And these were issued around 1866 and for the mill which was established in 1863. It has the elephant, which was really the 
any uh, the thing that typical Ceylon coins were issued in from about 1800 to about 18, eight, nine, uh, 1821. It was all elephants. So this has the elephant on it. And uh, this there was B, which is the half A was the smallest, B was the four and a half pence. And C was the nine pence. So that was easy to identify. And the nine pence has another specimen. This is called the wild elephant because you would have noticed that these elephants had a strapped around their body, which that is their domesticated elephants, uh, which were used as pieces of burden. But this one has no strap. So this is a wild elephant. It's called the wild elephant. It's a fairly rare, very rare specimen. And uh, Pridmo does not show a picture, but Pridmo mentions that this has been recorded. So it was luckily found by Shiran Cruz. And when he offered his collection for sale, this was one of the highlights which made me buy it because this is, I don't, I think, I think it's extremely rare. And he was lucky to find it, and I'm lucky to have it now in my collection. The, the, also, these coins were later used as chits, and this one of Pridmo was countermarked with 17. I collect, there is all the different numbers of all the way up to about a thousand. And I like this because 17 is what the Pridmo catalog number was. So I kept this for my at, uh, for the website. Okay. Uh, Tatam Manko, Sudhavel Mills, uh, Sudhavel Sudu, Sudu, Sudu Mills, and Tatam Manko. Now, that piece was identified. There is people who claim that Tatam Manko is the TC. I'm not sure whether that is correct, but uh, that, I mean, that could be quite a coincidence for any company which starts with a name T, so that we have no identified that that is actually what TC stands for. I think in any country, you should be able to find a company name which starts with T and claim that that is the company. Then there is some very interesting tokens which were, uh, done by uh, in uh, with the monogram K, K, C, D, and Co. Uh, and these, uh, uh, we had quite a few tokens with different, uh, this is the tortoise that was there. And the tort, the, those tokens were countermarked subsequently with various different uh, S and a D and a SD, SD and a DS and a S and a DS. So as, as the partners of that company changed, these tokens were countermarked. And I think there are about seven or eight different uh, initials being struck on this tortoise and only the tortoise. And I think they make a nice collection. They were all hold. Uh, tokens. I have one which was a, is a specimen which was not old, but most of the others are old. There were the same uh, series uh, with Dundas, uh, which is the ship, same size, all quarter things which were issued. And then there was the elephant. Uh, which is facing uh, left as typically the elephant's coins used to have the elephant facing left. And that uh, was issued by the same company in Candy. Uh, FR and Co for uh, Richmond and Fowler, Fowley, who started the business in 1866, which has the date 1866, which Champ Petty Mills on the other side. Brass token. From the size, it must have been the full value. Kolopitiya Mills, Lee Hedges and Company. 1857 date is there. 1867 date is there. And I think 
this is more a tea bush, maybe a tea bush than a coffee bush. So it may be the beginnings of uh, seeing uh, tea tokens rather than coffee tokens. Everybody calls them coffee tokens, but this and this half value or four and a half D is also reported to be average daily work, uh, pay of a woman worker. Very interestingly, I computed what four and a half pence during that time would be uh, to Sri Lankan rupees today. And it came out to be about 1,000 rupees uh, sometime back. Now it will be about 3,000 or 4,000. And at that time, I computed the salaries were about 1,000 rupees for a day's wage. So uh, they were asking for 1,000. The wage was around 800, I think. So it all co corresponds to the wa wages even today after 150 years. This is an interesting thing, a VOM for Vauxhall Mills. And it has a beautiful design on the other side, J.M. Robertson and company. They, they, they had two companies, oil mill, oil yard, which has OY, and the design of the token is the same. Another token, MDD and Co, very common. You find it frequently sold on eBay, but we have no idea what this in these initials. With so many initials, it would have been fairly should be fairly niche. Identify if there is a company with those initials, but this has not been identified. Another one, GR. P and Co, not identified. I need to really go through the uh, old uh, registries to see if I could find some identities for these uh, companies. It's a lot of work. This is uh, Pillow Fernando. He has put his name, so we have an idea. He had a mill in Slave Island, which was pulled down in 1872. So this was uh, four and a half pence and the lady is supposed to be Queen Victoria, which was also on the coins of that, the silver rupees of that time. There is a quarter, a half, uh, the quarter, uh, two and a half pot pe uh, pens, also coffee, uh, it's a square token, not many square ones. And this is uh, also a pillow Fernando. This is uh, McKenzie's, Machelan McKenzie and Company. It has the MM. And very interestingly, it has the Dharma Chakra, or what I say is the Eightfold Chakra. It's a Buddhist emblem stamped at the back. Uh, quite unique in that respect to have a, lo a local emblem. It was locally manufactured with a Buddhist emblem at the back. You get coins, ancient coins with that logo. MW and Co, Mathis, William and Company, which has been identified, which is situated in Dam Street. You can see that all these, a lot of these tokens have this very standard design of initials and four and a half D. Okay, uh, uh, Swan and Company, four and a half D. Uh, this is also Gunaratna, DV Gunaratna, local dealer, uh, coffee dealer of Dam Street. Uh, the tokens were the similar ones uh, struck in England. He was a plumbago dealer in NDP Silver. Uh, uh, PS would be his initials, I presume. Uh, so this is not for uh, coffee, but it's for plumbago mills. Mines, actually. Walcott Brothers. Now, most of the tokens were minted in uh, England, but this is sort of identified as being struck in Switzerland about 1872. This is in zinc. And this is, I think, the largest of them. 45 millimeters in diameter, about nine grams in zinc. And there is the same thing with a different name. Walcott Brothers, Maradana Mills, 
which was struck in also in Switzerland. Another one, DPP and Co, no identification. It says 19 cents. So whenever it says that now the values are in cents, uh, then we know that the token would have had to be issued after 1870. But you want to argue that if it is in cents, that's never not necessarily the case because there are currency notes which are which were issued in the 1850s and in the 1860s, which were in rupees long before decimalization, because the Indian rupee, the Indian silver rupee, was a, cur a currency of usage more than the British sterling. So therefore, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if there were the tokens also were not given in rupees and cents even before 1870, although generally people accept that if it is in cents, it must be after 1870. This is George Wall and Co. He was a big uh, coffee uh, uh, drawer in Ceylon, GW, a beautiful monogram for it. This is the smaller size, and then there is the larger size with the same monogram and a big C for the Kotachina mills in Kotahena. So the big C sort of tells the name of the mills on the other side. Beautiful engraved uh, token. And there is another one from also from George Walsh, which has a big M. And that's recognized as the Blumondal Mills, uh, but that was situated in Mutwal. So the M would be standing for Mutwal. Charles Henry de Soisa was a very, very famous uh, person. His father, Jeronis de Soisa, had basically bought a coffee estate back in 1836. And he outbid the British uh, bidders because he was one of the richest uh, traders in Ceylon at the time. And he outbid the British and bought this estate in 1836. So he was actually one of the richest people in, uh, in Ceylon at the time. And this is his token, CHDS. And I have a friend who is a descendant of Charles Henry de Soisa, and he was very interested in this token. Okay, another token uh, of zinc, which were made in uh, locally here, stuck in zinc. There we have initial A K B D A, and it has 25 cents, so we assume that is after 1870 but identification not has, has not been done as to who the company is. Same company, 10 cents, also in zinc. And then we have these, which are made out of vulcanized rubber. I think these are the only tokens made out of rubber. Quite nice tokens. It has a catamaran on one side and the initials on the other side. Now, these tokens were later used as caram dis, uh, it is reported. So maybe they were, they are about the size of, uh, they are 35 millimeters in diameter. So it would have been nice things to play caram with. They come in black, they come, a few of them in red. The red is much more rare. And uh, Pridmo records one in brown as well. I think these are much rarer than the red. I was at one time thinking that this was a faded red, but this is definitely a strong brown. So most probably there was brown. And recently in auction, I saw a green. I had never seen a green before. And this came on a, a recent auction and I'm not sure where this came from. It's not reported anywhere. I did not talk about it. It appeared in auction somewhere. I hope somebody has not painted one. Uh, this is uh, Union Mills, Kerry Sachin and Company, one of the most common coffee tokens you can buy. I think 
very large number of them were I have seen. I've seen hordes of hundreds, hundred or more than more than a hundred of them, and uh, they are very uh, very practically any day on eBay you will find one for sale. 1876 uh, J uh, JPJ that has 19 cents. The actually uh, four and a half pence was 18 and three quarter cents. But uh, that was approximated and it is normally reported as 19 cents because 50 cents was a shilling. So four and a half pence would come out to be 18 and three quarter, but uh, it is normally rounded out and put as 19 cents. Again, Demodogoda Mills, again of Lee Hedges, 1876 now. This is a beautiful thing. This is the only one that we know, only 500 specimens were struck. Uh, 18 and three quarter cents, as I said, would be the value. Colombo Commercial Company, which still exists. And that most probably is the tea bush, which appeared previously as well. So, uh, SC and Co, Sabana and Co, 1877, Ambevatta Mills. Uh, this is in brass. And then there is one SC and Co, Madama Mills, that's in tin. They are very difficult uh, even to get the image of it because I had to do a lot of image processing even to see the letter of this uh, token. Then there is JR and Co. 18 here it has been approximated down to 18 cents. Uh, not identified initials. Alham Kohn, uh, Kuhn, Colombo. Uh, details of which were not traced. 18 and a half cents now. So you get 18, 18 and a half, 18 and three quarter should be. See Shand and Company. I use them in gold with the gold name on one side, 18, it went bankrupt in 1875. So it has to have been issued before 1875. CS and Co, again with PS written, uh, maybe related with the PS before, maybe for not uh, Plumbago or something, stores or something. SS, not sure what that is. So same company with different initials for different stores, maybe. And this is the second most, or maybe the most common token. Again, starting what I started, which was George Stewart and Company, G S and Co. And this has a date 1843, which is purely the date that this first started countermarking tokens. But this particular one was issued in 1881 as a commemorative during the time that they stop, were actually stopped using tokens. So this was a commemorative issued in 1843 for the tokens that were issued initially in 18, uh, countermarked in 1843. It has uh, two ladies and CS and Co on the bag and Vekan the Mills uh, in Sinhala and Tamil. This will be the only token which has Sinhala and Tamil lettering during that time, even though currency and stamps, uh, everything, uh, st the currency notes had Sinhala and Tamil, at least the value in all of them since the, since the Dutch period. And finally, I have this token, which is as 50 cents, you know that that's a, if it was a shilling, so it's much later, most probably inflation has gone, caught up with him. This was around 1900. And the Panavat estate, it's not recorded in Pridmo, but this is really of a later era of time uh, from the original. So that is my talk. I hope I didn't take too much time. And uh, this is the, uh, all these tokens are cataloged in my website, coins.laktiva.org. And I have another website, notes.laktiva.org, which has the currency notes from 18, uh, 1785. 
and most of those I now work with images, I get in auctions, even if I don't have images. OK, 